Hello and what's up? So for today's uh, standard deck tech video, we will cover on the topic of budget. So if you're not really going to it because probably you have a wide collection of cards in your MTG Online or Arena account, then this would not be the good topic for you. But for some uh, new players that probably going to be uh, beginners of the game, in which they would uh, really go with an archetype as well as what their card pool would have in cases where they would uh, have uh, not enough uh, resources to buy any of the boosters or participate in premier events then they would go with uh, probably some rare less type of deck and so for today's uh, topic of discussion this is uh, one really of the Suggested the deck text that I saw from MG Goldfish. It caught my attention because of the past is that uh, it is uh, more uh, mostly built on black and silver. That means that you go with uh, just commons and uncommons on the build, zero rares, but the functionality would still be intact. And of course, the game winning strategy is still there. So we're going to call this deck. So what uh, the right up there it says this is a budget delta unveil silver black i just removed the silver black part so we can call it as the unveil deck rakdos unveil on the main strategy as uh, compared for what this uh, particular archetype has been existing in the metagame of standard with brothers war so we're going to go through to a budget version of this build with this uh, setup with 10 artifacts, 12 creatures, 6 instants, 12 sorceries, and 20 lands. Now we go first with our what the synergy dictates, which the namesake of the deck, only called Unveil. This is a total cast black and red artifact that whenever one or more artifacts you control leave the battlefield during your turn, you will create a 1 1 colorless construct artifact of your token. This ability only triggers once each turn, and you may have this one top to sacrifice an artifact to deal one damage to its opponent you will gain one life in the process so if you have uh, already faced this similar archetype in your standard rank uh, grinding or in pioneer or explorer you will see that multiple copies of this in the main deck i mean on the board would really become a huge trouble for most of the mid-range decks that could not really go with enough power before the anvils will get their life totals to zero of course uh with this uh build in the ideal scenario would we'll be, we'll be equipped more with uh, cards like lilina of the veil children and some other rare cards that really uh, goes with uh, effectivity and efficientness but then again we're back again for a white version so we're going to stick with how the deck would uh, look like and build out in the setup so unicorn and build four copies we also have four copies of experimental synthesizer as reflected in the typical build of this deck, so it enters the battlefield or leaves the battlefield, you may exile the top card library and you may play that card at the end of the turn. The usual scenario here will just be sacrifice this card to the unicorn and build on your turn to create a 1 1 colorless construct artifact creature token. So that 1 1 would probably go with some uh, chunk blocking effects or just chunk out some small one damage to our opponents and at the same time use the unveil to sacrifice the token to create another 1-1 one, one, uh, coreless artifact uh, construct so that would also give them one damage to its opponent and you get one life so this is when a synthesizer is sort of a father to get you a good card advantage at the same time you will create a 1-1 one, one, uh, creature token that would serve out as your uh, continuous uh, sacrifice uh, father for this uh, unveil artifact now for its ability, you can also have this one sacrifice by itself by paying two generic in rent to have a two two white uh, summer creature token with vigilance. So activation will only cost you a sorcery. It's not really a drawback since it would still create some of the attackers or blockers in certain scenario. Now for this uh, four copies of each, we also have two copies of sanguine statuette. So this one is relying on the blood token sacrifice. It is an artifact that when it enters the battlefield, you will create a blood token. So whenever you sacrifice a blood token, you may have this one become a 3-3 vampire artifact creature with haste. So this becomes a life, uh, uh, probably like an opal style or opal gargoyle sort of creature 
that uh, comes to place an artifact but at the same time becomes activated whenever it's covered by blood token. Now, so for those blood tokens, so your source would be with these cards. The blood type harvester, uh, this is a common black red component already because of creating blood token at the same time. Use this card to get the attack creature minus x minus x because uh, depending on the number of uh, twice the number of blood tokens you control. So for copies of that, we also have uh, Voldar and Epicure, wherein you can also have a blood token created and will deal one damage to each creature. So those parts that whenever you sacrifice a blood token to the unveil or use it to draw for a card, or you cycle a card from your card from your hand, you will get to activate some bits to it into a 3-3 for uh, 3 damage or any other purpose that we will have in the battlefield. So for another 4 copies of the creatures, in which we have a total of 12, we have a uh, second sun smelter. So this is a uh, 2 cast 2 to goblin. We're in a beginning of combat of your turn, you may pay 1 and sacrifice an artifact. If you do, you will create a 3-1 red construct artifact creature token with haste. So another token source at the same time, you can use those tokens created by Unbill to upgrade it into a 3-1 red construct with haste so that's really a good option here wherein having multiple copies of this on, uh, on your board would have each of them trigger a combat during the beginning of the standard step to have uh, those random artifacts turn into 3-1 constructs now in support of these uh, creature cards we have several sorcery spells in here that we can work around first we have a uh, dreadfuge it's a one to cast uh, with cleave for three Target player reveals their hand and you may choose an unland card from them. Or if you're going to cleave, you will choose an unland, unland card with not with the mana value two or less. But with, if you're going with a one to cast version, we'll just uh, choose a card, an unland card with the mana value two or less and have that player discard it. So it's so a good uh, sorcery, uh, one, one mana to have some relevant spells with the value two or less. Discarded from your opponent's heart, you may have uh, some cards like a braid or any counter spell that may turn your that might prevent your turn to unveil into resolving. So this would be a good one mana sorcery to go off your, your uh, first turn. Now in support of this, we also have uh, No Way Out. This is a common card from Minute Hunts to, to cast for two generic and black target opponent. Discards two cards and it will create a two two black zombie creature with the gate. So to copy that, uh, there maybe there are situations that the author has uh, noted wherein the discard two cards would be efficient in some of the mid-range or control matches. So it has figured that uh, this discard will also get to be relevant as long as you will also create a 2-2 two -two black zombie creature token with decade to be used later on to be sacrificed for another uh, effect. Now for uh support of this we also have two copies of reckless impulse when you exile the two cards in library until the end of your next turn you may play those cards either you can exile a land card or some of this uh chip uh, one drops and two drops to have them played in your next turn so basically you're just drawing two more cards from the top of your library and extra two cards if uh, those would be played on your next turn now with those uh, copy we also have some removals in form of strangle this is just one uh, cost common from Capena. It will deal 3 damage to a creature or player. Which, uh, nothing too fancy about it. Just a cheap mana value to have this uh, very fit of having to deal 3 damage. Then, last but not the least on the sorcery category, we have this vampire skis where in the player lose 2 life and you gain 2 life. And you will create 2 blood tokens. So, these blood tokens will then later on be a father for your unveil. Use them to activate uh, this one and also some other shenanigans that you may need in this deck oh, last but for instance before we go with the uh, basic lands in our mana curve uh, uh, analysis we have some cut downs in support of the, the strangle with some instant uh, destroy effects on the limit of just killing five uh, tower toughness total or less and then Three copies uh faker on that so this one from capena also has this effect that whenever target cure dies in addition to its plus to plus zero it comes back to battlefield tap under its own control and you create a treasure token 
So very uh, beneficial and extra artifact. You get the return card stop on the little turn. Uh, it gets plus two plus zero. Can be good for combat math. And also, I see this one as a good benefit because you can just sacrifice blood tide for a removal, and then use fake your own death uh, on it just before its ability resolves, or maybe just before you can activate its ability, so that it will return back tap, but you will create another blood token, another treasure token as a benefit. So last but not the least, for our lands, we have four blood games. I had to decorate again the mountain to unhinge, but you can use any mountain from your current pool if you like. Four of mountain and four, I mean, eight of mountain, eight of swamps, with a total of 20 for the lands. Now, for our converted mana cost, basically around two with 1.63, and most of the components consist of one and two casting cost. Color distribution, not really a problem. We have uh, black for 21 and thread for 27 but the support producers is 15 and 15 in total there are times that may need to go uh, have uh, more red than black but i think it will not really matter in most of these uh, scenarios last but not the least our tokens because we are using a lot of tokens in this build we have a blood token of course construct token for the smelter another construct token one one for this one is for Let's see, check which can be relevant. This one this is a construct for the anvil. And somebody token for the synthesizer. Along with the treasure token. And of course, the zombie with the decade. So, I guess we are going to the budget type to test in your dailies in MGO and MTG Arena. I guess this would go with this deck the budgeted Rakdos Anvil deck tech from the Goldfish of this. Uh, set up that are probably just go with the budget, but at the same time the main strategy is still maintained Okay, that's about it for this video. If you like this one if you're willing to go budget with some of the standard deck archetypes Then you just uh, subscribe in the notifications on for more uh, similar Magic the Gathering deck tech content Thank you for checking this video and until the next time guys and see ya